Hi, just a small content warning for this episode. We'll be dealing with issues of trauma and loss. This is not always an easy topic, but it's one that sometimes needs to be addressed. If you or someone else you know is struggling with trauma involving loss, just remember, it's okay to reach out for help. Thank you, and enjoy the episode. Justice. There is no such thing. I came here for vengeance. Lady Arabeth de Tilmerande. Welcome, humble adventurers, to my realm of knowledge and mystery. Here, in my cursed library, are endless tomes and scrolls on the darkest and evilest foes in all the realms, be they from Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, the many worlds of darkness, or any realm in between. Welcome to the Dastardly Decimal System. I'm your caretaker of the corrupt, the librarian, Caster Kane. In many worlds across many realms, paladins have always been held up as the purest of heroes. They stand above all else as beacons of righteousness and good. They are the loyal servants of the gods and the defenders of the weak. The problem is that even the best of us can fall. And when you stand high above everybody else, the fall is far more devastating when you finally hit rock bottom. Grab a seat, adventurer, because the tea is ready. I have brewed Paladin Tea. It is a chai blend with flavors of chocolate, vanilla, and finished with the golden caramel of a tiger's eye. So let me pour you a cup as we talk about the fall of Lady Arabeth de Tilmerande. Lady Arabeth de Tilmerande is a half-elf woman. She has long, flowing auburn hair that touches the small of her back. She has dark green eyes and firm lips. She wears a half-plate armor with flame-shaped spikes on her left shoulder. She carries a long sword and a shield, and she wears around her neck the holy symbol of Tyr. As a blackguard, however, her eyes became red, her lips became blackened, and her armor was now stained blood red. She had forsaken her sword and board for a more brutal looking bastard sword and replaced her holy symbol with a magic pendant provided by Queen Morag. However, the biggest change she took in breaking her oath was that of her hair. Her once long locks had been cut short. Now the flowing auburn hair fell only to her shoulder length. As a blackguard, Arabeth is a powerful melee warrior. She has the ability to strike at foes' weak points with sneak attack, while also punishing good heroes by smiting them with necrotic, evil energy. And if that wasn't enough, she had the ability to call on dark magic to strengthen and protect her, while inflicting great pain on those she deemed her foes. Arabeth was born in Thundertree, a small town within the kingdom of Neverwinter. She was an eager child and a resourceful one. She was trained by a harper ranger known as Ansal Bloodshoulder. As she got older, he gifted her with a magical ring known as the Ring of the Wood Elves. Using the magical strength of this item, Arabeth was able to protect her own town from a malicious Luskin mage at only a very young age. As she got older, Arabeth put more of her attention into her village and her training. Sadly, an orc clan raided the village and massacred everyone. Being the sole survivor, Arabeth swore vengeance. 
She started by hunting down the clan and slaying each and every one of them. But their lives were not enough. Unable to properly deal with the trauma of her loss, she became obsessive. She viewed orc kind as a blight. They had to be eliminated. Only then would the people of Faerun be safe. Only then would others not have to suffer in the same way she did. Succumbing to the darkness that lay inside of her, Arabeth continued her hunt of all or kind. Her obsessive quest continued for months, until one day she was caught in a powerful blizzard. Unable to escape, she began to succumb to the cold, yet at the moment when she was about to die, a one-armed man appeared. He saved her and brought her to a nearby monastery. Realizing that her savior was most likely an avatar of Tyr, Arabeth devoted her life to that god. She began her training as a paladin. Eventually, she moved to Neverwinter, where she became the elite bodyguard of Lord Nasher Alagondar, making her not only the first woman to hold that position, but also the first non-human. It was also in Neverwinter that she met a cleric of Tyr named Fenthic Moss. The friendship between the two grew quickly, evolving first into love, and eventually they were engaged to be wed to each other. For the first time since the loss of her town, Arabeth was in a good place. Life was good for Arabeth. She was content. But all of that changed when the plague arrived. It was called the Wailing Death. It was a disease that started in the poor districts of Neverwinter. Clerics and healers were dumbfounded as to how to stop it. The disease seemed to be immune to both mundane and magical methods. As the disease started to kill citizens by the dozen, the city was quickly put into quarantine. Everybody was in lockdown. Lord Alagondar called upon Keldin Erasum, the Blackstaff Wizard, to come up with an arcane solution, while Arabeth led the process along Fenthic and a cleric of Helm known as Dester Indelane. Now some found Dester to be off-putting, but Fenthic found him fascinating. He trusted the cleric completely, and even lent Dester his ward key to allow him access to the ritual. The Blackstaff Wizard was lucky enough to come up with a method to try and stop the Wailing Death, but it would require some very unique creatures. It required an Intellect Devourer, a Yonti Pureblood, a Cockatrice, and a Dryad. Using his spells and his connections outside the city, he had the four creatures teleported in. But when the ritual was about to begin, Suddenly, the hall was attacked and each of the creatures fled into the city. A survivor of the attack, an adventurer who would eventually be known as the Hero of Neverwinter, set out to retrieve them. One by one, the Hero retrieved each of the creatures. During this process, he began to learn about the origin of the plague. This disease was not some mundane thing that had just occurred. It was the doing of the Cult of the Eye, a malicious organization that belonged to a mysterious woman known as Queen Morag. With all of the ingredients ready, the Blackstaff Wizard began the ritual. He combined the brain of the Intellect Devourer, the heart of the Yonti Pureblood, a feather of the Cockatrice, and a lock of the Dryad's hair. Together, they were finally able to create a cure to the Wailing Death. But then it was stolen. As the ritual completed, Deathster Indelane revealed himself to be a member of the Cult of the Eye. He grabbed the cure and leapt through a portal back to Helm's Hold. Fenthic chased after the traitor, hoping to change Deathster's mind. 
to revert him back to the side of good. He begged and pleaded for Death Stir to return, but the cultist was unwavering. His loyalty was only to the one known as Queen Morag. The hero of Neverwinter was the next to follow. They faced Death Thur in combat, barely defeating the cleric and returning with both the cure and the traitor in tow. Lord Alagondar quickly put Death Thur on trial, yet even with the unwavering evidence against him, Fenthic claimed the cleric's innocent. Death Thur was not guilty, he had been compelled or corrupted. Death Thur was not at fault, they had to forgive Death Thur. Not only did these pleas fall on deaf ears, but they also turned out to be Fenthic's downfall. For when Deathur was executed for treason, so too was Fenthic. Fenthic's death was devastating for Arabeth. The love of her life had been executed for a crime he did not commit. Fenthic was an innocent man. He was considered wise in a peaceful society, but was a fool in a more desperate reality. He was a mind too weak to handle true betrayal. Therefore, he only ever saw the best in people, a trait that had led to his downfall. The loss of her fiancé began to stir up repressed trauma that lay inside of Arabeth. Once again, her feelings of loss began to surface. First it was her village, now it was her fiancé. Her inner darkness began to rise once more. Just like when she hunted the orcs, a murderous darkness began to bubble inside of her. That was when Queen Morag made contact. Morag was one of the old ones a reptilian race that existed long before even the elves. Morag sensed the darkness within the paladin. She appeared to her in a dream and began to appeal to that darkness. How could a just kingdom seem fit to punish a simple mind for a crime they did not commit? How could a god of justice punish an innocent soul? A civilized city was meant to protect the innocent, not condemn them. Therefore, if Neverwinter could commit such crimes on the innocent, then they too deserved to be punished. Night after night, Morag reappeared in Arabeth's dreams, speaking these words over and over until she submitted. As the hero of Neverwinter began to hunt the Cult of the Eye, they found themselves atop Luskin's host tower of the Arcane. There, they witnessed Arabeth being inducted as the leader of the Cult's army. Lady Arabeth de Tilmeronde was no longer a paladin of Tyr. She was now a Blackguard. The Wailing Death had taken its toll on Neverwinter. It had killed off hundreds of citizens and drastically weakened Neverwinter's military forces. Never had the legendary city been so frail. The city of Luskin, under the command of the cult, decided to exploit this power shift and launched an invasion. Arabeth led the forces against the very city she once swore to protect. The invasion was brutal. Morag's forces included mages, assassins, cultists, and even the entire military might of Luskin. Neverwinter fought with all of its might to repel the attacks, relying heavily on the charity of adventurers and heroes. 
In the climax of the battle, the hero of Neverwinter faced off against Arabeth in combat. The Blackguard was fearsome in combat. She would strike with her bastard sword, channel dark, corrupted magic into her blade, and smite the good-aligned heroes. She would strike at the hero's weak point with sneak attacks and call upon a flurry of divine magic to bolster her in combat, to raise her strength to an almost godlike level. The battle was long and arduous, but eventually Arabeth was defeated. She surrendered to the hero of Neverwinter and was returned to the city to be put on trial. Lady Arabeth de Tilmerande was found guilty and was publicly executed. For most, death would be the end. A soul like Lady Arabeth de Tilmerande would be sent to the Hells to be punished, and her story would end there. However, this is Faerun. And while traveling from Faerun to the depths of Hell is no easy task, it is also not an uncommon one. Shortly after the Siege of Neverwinter, another chaotic event was brewing, as it tends to do in Faerun. Metastopheles had begun a malicious campaign to conquer Toril and transform it into a new layer of hell. Posing him was a hero who once held the title of Drogon Drogon's son's pupil. While traveling through Cania, the eighth layer of hell, the pupil came across the soul of Arabeth. Now time runs differently in the hells. What could only be a year for us could be decades for those being tortured. So when the pupil found the former paladin, they found her in a broken and distraught state. She had spent her time running through her feelings and dealing with her trauma. She had seen the error of her ways and wanted to join the pupil in stopping Metastopheles. She wanted to make amends. She wanted to be redeemed. On their travels, Arabeth told the pupil of how the hero of Neverwinter defended her even during her trials, and how her death and execution ruined the relationship between the hero and Lord Nasher, and during the entire time between the trial and her imprisonment, and even up to the days before her execution, Arabeth spoke how she had begun to develop feelings for the hero of Neverwinter, and they too had developed feelings for her. This is partially why she wanted to be redeemed. Without it, she could never be reunited with the hero of Neverwinter. When the pupil and Arabeth faced off against Metastopheles, the Archdevil did his best to woo her back to the side of evil. But Arabeth would not be budged. She fought alongside the pupil until Metastopheles was defeated. With that victory, she was a redeemed paladin, and she was able to go to Mount Celestia. There, she awaits to be reunited with the hero of Neverwinter. It is not often I get to talk about a redeemed villain. Sadly, many who fall off the path of good never find their way back. Especially when trauma is involved. Trauma is such a powerful thing. It's what happens when our minds experience something that they're not ready to handle. Trauma is very much like a slad. Now, for those who don't know, and this is not a pretty sight. Slads reproduce by placing their eggs beneath the skin of their victims. There, the egg sits, slowly devouring our insides until it becomes a tadpole, before it rips out, tearing us apart. Trauma is very much the same way. Lady Arabeth had suffered a great deal of loss in her time, 
and she was never fully able to process it while she was alive. She let that trauma just sit inside of her, eating her up over and over. Had she been able to properly process it, perhaps she wouldn't have fallen to Queen Morag's influences. Perhaps she could have found peace in her life instead of death and war. Perhaps she could have found love while she was still alive. It seems that our tea has once again run dry, which means our time is up. Join me again in my library for more stories and lore about the darkest villains from the darkest realms. This has been the Dastardly Decimal System, and once again, I am your librarian, Caster Kane. Do you love the Dastardly Decimal System and want to support us? Check out our new Patreon. Members will get access to show notes, official artwork, our new bonus episode series called Cleaning Up After Tea Time, and of course, plenty of cat pics of Vega voice actors fashions it. You'll even be able to suggest a topic for a future episode. Check it out at patreon.com slash dastardly decimal system. If you're not financially able, but still want to support us, how about suggesting the show to a D&D loving friend? It really helps us get noticed. The Dastardly Decimal System can be found on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at DD System Podcast. That's Delta Delta System Podcast. Drop us a message and say hi. Vega always loves the attention. This podcast was produced by Midnight Reading Audio, a division of Midnight Reading Publishing. The voice of Castor Kane is Larry Gent. Hi. The voice of Vega is provided by my cats, Fashion Zid. Music was Bailstone by Andreas Wolf from Pixabay. License under the Creative Commons. Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And remember, it's always okay to seek help.